Athens. Ancient Greece wasn't organized into what we would think of as a country, like in modern times. Instead, Greek culture came from many individual cities and a great number of peoples that were all independent. There was no capital city where all the wealth and power was concentrated, like there was in Egypt or Persia at this time. Each city, or polis, had its own government, but more or less all the cities agreed they were part of the same group, which we call Ancient Greece. There were thousands of polis scattered across the entire coast of the Mediterranean Sea. But if you really wanted to be riding the crest of the wave around about the 5th century BC, you undoubtedly had to stroll through Athens. It was one of the most important cities, and today is the symbol of Greek culture. The Acropolis was the place where the most important buildings were constructed. This was where they built the Parthenon, one of the most impressive temples of classical Greece, built to honor Pallas Athena, who was the protector goddess of Athens, and whose virtues were intelligence and wisdom. This monument was built as part of a great project by Pericles. I don't want to boast, but I, Pericles, am the greatest governor that ancient Athens ever had. Pericles thought the best way of honoring Pallas Athena was to turn to live and work. Athens was where Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle lived, three great philosophers who are still considered some of the world's smartest people. Athens was the first place in the universe where the idea of democracy, which means government by the people, first began to take shape. The Athenians had the idea of creating a government in which all free citizens could participate in decisions and all could enjoy the results. Because if each person is capable of generating virtue, then each person has all the necessary abilities within him or her to govern, don't you think? In fact, all citizens today participate in decisions by voting, and we continue to call this democracy. Sparta. The Spartans lived on the Peloponnesian Peninsula. They were a fearsome people who devoted their lives to the art of war and whose greatest virtue was bravery. If you were a Spartan, your preparation for war began very early in life. To begin with, the Spartans, by law, had to be strong and healthy. In other words, if a child was born with any sort of physical defect, it was thrown off a mountain and left to the mercy of wild animals. Now, if you were lucky enough to be born healthy, you began to be schooled in fighting at a very young age. And you stayed in the army from the age of 20 until you were 60 years old. Wow, these guys seem very tough, like superheroes. That's nothing. Open the book and find out about one of the greatest stories of the Spartans. During the Median Wars in 480 BC, a massive army from the Persian Empire led by King Xerxes started an invasion of the Greek cities. Only 300 Spartans under the leadership of King Leonidas were there to face the thousands of Persian soldiers. Despite their overwhelming disadvantage, these 300 brave Spartans managed to hold off the enemy advance in order to give more time for the rest of the Greeks to organize their defense. None of the Spartans survived the battle, but they achieved their objective, and the Persians were finally defeated. Whoa! Let's dig a little deeper with our time coming.